Beneath the veneer of skepticism, reality bears witness to chilling truth. In the haunting corridors of history, where shadows dance with undeniable evidence, remember this, the stories are true. Prepare for a revelation, where the supernatural is stripped of fiction, and the unknown is laid bare. Are you ready to confront the undeniable? The stories are true, and the echoes of reality await. So picture this, the Grand Piddick Mansion, standing tall amidst the lush greenery, like the fanciest house party thrown by Mother Nature herself. Now this place wasn't just some run-of-the-mill abode, it was Henry Piddick's way of saying, I'm an Oregonian publisher and I need a house that screams, look at me, I'm fancy. Back in 1914, construction kicked off, and let me tell you, it was a process slower than a tortoise on a leisurely stroll. Blocks of Tonino sandstone were hand-picked by a San Francisco architect, Edward Falks, who probably had a subscription to Architectural Digest, because this mansion was like an art piece. It had all the gizmos and gadgets of the Time Central vacuum system, intercoms, fancy lighting, an elevator, and a fridge that could probably store a lifetime supply of ice cream. Now enter Georgiana, Henry's wife, who loved nothing more than being a socialite and tending to her rose gardens. She was the queen bee of Portland's upper class, creating the Rose Society and birthing the famous Rose Festival. Sadly, the duo had to part ways with their mansion in 1958 due to upkeep struggles, and things went south when the Columbus Day storm of 62 hit, almost turning the mansion into a bunch of fancy toothpicks. But fear not. The community rallied, raised $75,000 in the blink of an eye, and saved the day. The Piddick Mansion became a historic site, and Portlanders, being the eco-warriors they are, turned it into a prime spot for birdwatching probably making it the only haunted house where the ghosts are avid bird watchers. Now Hollywood couldn't resist the allure of the Piddick Mansion. It starred in 77's First Love and a slasher flick called Unhinged in 82. You'd think being a movie star would be enough, but no, the mansion had its share of scandal too. Henry got caught up in a political mess in 1911, accused of waterline shenanigans. A feud with Will Daly ensued, making Piddick the OG of political drama. Fast forward to the afterlife and the Piddick Mansion is buzzing with ghostly gossip. Visitors report more spookiness than a Halloween party at a graveyard. Apparently, the upper rooms are the paranormal party zone, with the unmistakable scent of roses wafting through the air. Georgiana, the green-thumbed ghost, is probably still fussing over her blooms. But it's not just floral fragrances. There's a ghostly groundskeeper doing his spectral duties, and the sound of shovels hitting dirt echoes through the northern part of the mansion. Maybe he's a die-hard employee even in the afterlife, refusing to clock out. Now, if you're into a bit of furniture feng shui, you're in for a treat. Reports say the Piddicks might be doing some post-mortem redecorating. I mean, who wouldn't want to rearrange their furniture in the afterlife? And last but not least, there's a ghostly lady in a gown making fashion statements, appearing and disappearing like a ghostly runway model. One poor staff member got a surprise light show when all the lights in the mansion decided bedtime could wait. So there you have it, my friend, the Piddick Mansion, where history, hauntings, and a touch of Hollywood combine for a tale that's stranger than fiction and funnier than a ghost telling knock-knock jokes. Thanks for joining us on this eerie adventure. If you enjoyed the chills, don't forget to subscribe. More mysteries await. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay curious.